What's your opinion on some of the old-fashioned standby inks? Parker Quink, Waterman, Schaefer Scrip, Diamond, etc. Um, okay, so the old-fashioned inks, well, you know, I actually just had an article come up on uh, Fountain Pen Network kind of speculating why why we dropped Waterman. Uh, it was the other way around. Um, you know, we, uh, you know, just Newell Rubbermaid is a distributor uh, for Waterman and Parker, and they just, you know, made a decision to focus on more of the big box stores and stuff. So all of the smaller, re smaller retailers like us um, got kicked out and said, uh, you know, if you guys want to continue to carry the brand, you can go with this other, you know, distributor who's handling all our smaller accounts. Um, without getting into a lot of detail, I wasn't as crazy about um, the distributorship arrangement there. So, um, and it wasn't, honestly, those brands were not really very popular. We had kind of talked about dropping them anyway, just because of lack of interest. Um, so that's why we don't have that. So that's a quick kind of explanation there. But um, as far as the actual quality of the inks and stuff, I actually, before, um, you know, as soon as we got notice, and it was like, literally it was like day of, it was pretty much like effective as of this date. And we had like a letter in the mail that was like, oh, that's today. Um, and I think we got an email too at the same time. So we got the letter and the email and it was like, well, this is a done deal then. So whatever stock we have on hand, that's it. Um, so I just pulled one online for myself. So I have, you know, one of pretty much everything. We still have Schaefer. It's just Parker and Waterman I'm talking about here. Um, but I basically got one of everything, but you know, honestly, Parker, I've never been a huge fan of their ink. It's just never been great. It's pretty dry. Just hasn't been a stellar performer. Waterman, I like a lot more. And uh, for a while there, as I was, you know, kind of testing out pens and stuff like that, Waterman Mysterious Blue or the Blue Black um, was what I was kind of using as a standard because I know, you know Richard Binder and even Brian Gray and a bunch of other people really kind of standardize on the Waterman ink because it's so classic and has been known for a long time. But, you know, what can I say? It is what it is. So, um, you know, some of the Watermans that I really liked, you know, Serenity Blue or what was previously Florida Blue, Mysterious Blue, um, Shaper Red, Shaper Turquoise, they're pretty decent. Um, you know, so they're like, those are kind of some of the standouts, but the rest of the lines, they're pretty, you know, they have a pale blue, they have a turquoise, they have a red, they have maybe purple, you know, it's fairly, they have brown, it's, it's pretty standard fare. Um, you know, that's, that's kind of what you're gonna get. Most of the time you're dealing with pen companies that also carry ink. They tend to go with really safe, really rather unsaturated inks that, you know, are kind of middle of the road, aren't going to cause any trouble in the pen, which is fine. But, you know, at the same time, they're not super bright and vibrant and very terribly interesting, to be honest with you, for the most part. So they tend to go pretty safe in terms of their colors. Uh, me personally, I think, you know, I think the nature of this question was even talking about, like, you know, there's a lot of people that may even uh, only use these uh, and not venture out too much from them. I think that's just a shame. I really, I think there's so many other fun colors. Like when I got into fountain pens, I didn't have an extensive pen knowledge. So the ink and the colors and all the different variations there is really what drew me into the fountain pen hobby in the first place. So for me, it's like, okay, why in the world would you only stick with a brand that has, you know, three or seven colors when you can get, you know, hundreds and hundreds of different colors. So I think it's a great opportunity to get into things like Diamine and Robert Oster Detrimentis, you know, Noodlers, other things like that, and really explore a lot. Um, you know, I think you're you're kind of missing out on some of the experience if you're not going beyond, you know, these typical brands of ink. And I think there's a lot more interesting properties, interesting colors you can get to if you'll expand outside of the typical pen brands.